All right, let's look at drawing a heating curve. So lots of information given here. We're, look, we're given a, a melting point here. We're given a boiling point. Now, so if this was water, it would be uh, zero and 100, right? Um, but this is a different substance. We're also given the enthalpy of fusion. So how much energy it takes to melt it, which is what? Separating intermolecular forces. Right, we have to. We don't have to completely separate them like we do with vaporization here. Notice this number is bigger, thirty-eight versus four, because you're completely separating those intermolecular forces. Whereas when you're melting, you're just kind of loosening them up. We're in this structure, and then we're going to loosen them up uh, and relax them with some uh, temperature, which is our average kinetic energy. Right? There's enough energy. There's enough movement to kind of separate those. Uh, we're also given density, which uh, I don't believe we need in this problem, but we do need some heat capacity uh, numbers. And notice it's heat capacity and not specific because there's no mass. So we're not going to actually deal with mass in this problem. Uh, we're going to deal with just uh, a set amount of heat in kilojoules per mole. So we're, this is just kind of a, a standard for if uh, we had a mole, essentially, because we're looking at per mole, and all of these have per mole, per mole, per mole. So we're just looking at a kind of a set amount per mole here. Okay, so we have this 10.0 kilojoules of mole to use. How are we going to use it, right? So we're starting at 20 degrees. So we're going to have a graph, and we can look at this graph if we scroll down. It starts at 20, and we're going to build our point. Okay, so we're going to start at our 20 degrees and we're going to have to put some amount of heat, which is based off of uh, Q equals specific heat times change in temperature uh, in, and that's going to take us to some point where we'll do that calculation. Uh, it looks like we're going from 20 to 50 where it melts. Then we're going to put some heat in where it uh, it's just melting. It's that process of uh, loosening those intermolecular forces. Then if we have heat left, we will get from 50 to 90, the boiling point, which again, uh, so this is Q times the uh, enthalpy of fusion. Oops. Uh, and then, then we're back to Q equals. And then if there were uh, heat left, we would go to this boiling process. But you can see here that it takes 38 kilojoules per mole just to boil because we're separating completely those intermolecular forces. And we only have 10 to start with. So we know we won't get through boiling. We, we could get to like a point right here, but we're not gonna get to where we're completely boiling and then adding more heat, um, which is possible. You know, if we started with uh, 60 kilojoules per mole of heat available, we might get up, you know, to superheated uh, gas state here. But so let's do this. So we're going to start with, uh, so let's clear this out here. We're going to start with uh, 20 to 50. So 30 degrees change. Now notice this says Kelvin uh, and our change in temperature is in is 30 degrees Celsius. Now remember, if I said 20 degrees Celsius, that would be 293 in Kelvin. But one degree change in Celsius is the same as one degree change in Kelvin when we're looking at change in temperature. Uh, so we could give, we can change that to Celsius or this one to Kelvin. It uh, doesn't matter. But uh, we're going to go with our 30 degree change times 46 joules per mole. And we get, now remember, this is in joules. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes here. Uh, which is actually just 1.38 kilojoules per mole. So 1.38 kilojoules, that's our first step. So let's put that in. Let me scroll down here. So we're going to go from 20 to 50 at 1.38. Now it doesn't have to be perfect on here, but you just get it as close as you can. So let's go 20 to 50 at 1.38. Okay. Now let's look at our next step. Uh, it's four kilojoules per mole. So, so it takes 
over twice as much to melt it than it does to just raise to raise the temperature 30 degrees. So now we're just going to go from 1.38 to 5.38. And it's just going to be flat. There we go. Oh, let's make that a little flatter. There we go. Okay, so now we've used 5.38 uh, of, and so let's look at heating. Again, we're gonna go 40 degrees this time. Let's see if we have all of that. 40 degrees times, this time 82 joules. So you have to change solid, now we're in liquid, 82 joules. So we get, 3,280 joules per mole. So that is 3.28. Now 3.28 plus our 5.38, we've already done. We're at 8.66 total. So 1.38 plus four plus 3.28 is 8.66. So let's scroll down. We're gonna go, uh, from here, and we got to go up to 90 and do it at 8.66. So, right about here, up at 90. And then the rest, we have 38 to melt it. So, we're not going to get through melting, but we're just going to draw till 10 because we got to get to 10. The goal is to get to 10 here. So we're gonna go from 90, we're gonna stay at 90, but we're gonna start doing some boiling. But we won't finish boiling, but some of it will. So let's check this. There we go. So we're building a heating curve. Notice the curve is steeper here than it is here. That's because we have, it only takes 46 joules per degree instead of 82 degrees. 82 joules per degree uh, with the heat capacity. So it's a little different slope. And when we're melting or boiling, we're just straight on that line. So we'll build the heating curve. Sometimes you might only get to that first step uh, of melting, or you might get all the way to here. Um, but the process of building that heating curve is a good learning experience.